guys, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. I hope you're ready for another Columbo reaction video because that is what we're doing today, starting off with the first episode of season one, Murder by the Book. I almost said Death Lends a Hand, which is actually kind of funny because Death Lends a Hand was supposed to be like the first episode of season one of Columbo, but Richard Levinson and William Link saw Murder by the Book and they were like, Damn, this episode's really, really, really good. Can we move it in place of Death Lens a Hand? And they did, and the rest is history. So there's your fun fact to open up the YouTube video. I am very excited to watch this one for many reasons. One of them being that this episode was actually directed by Steven Spielberg in 1971. And I believe he was 24 years old at the time, which is actually kind of insane. Apparently the story goes something like, Levinson and Link had seen a cut of The Psychiatrist, which was one of Steven Spielberg's early projects, and they showed it to Peter Falk because they needed his approval to get him on as a director, and Peter Falk watched, watched it, and they were all like, um, holy shit, this kid is amazing. So <laughs> they hired him, and sure enough, he, he directed the first episode of Columbo season one, which is very cool. I had no idea when I watched the, this episode for the first time, but there are some very poignant and obvious Steven Spielberg shots that just kind of tune you into the fact like this is his project. I feel like he's one of those directors where he has such a distinct directorial style that you can call it out almost immediately. Oh, also another fun fact for you. This episode actually just turned 50 years old in 2021. I believe it's gonna be 52 year this year, which is insane to me because the concept of time when I watch these shows just doesn't exist to me. It's weird to think about like, oh, I guess Columbo is over 50 years old. That's really strange. It just doesn't, I try not to think about those things and I wish that time would slow down. Let's go ahead and jump into the official first episode of Columbo, Murder by the Book. I am so sorry about this. Right as I tried to press play on the episode and get my reaction video started, the internet crashed and then proceeded to do that for the next 10 minutes. So I was forced to relocate to a different room, hence the different surroundings and the blurred background. So. I've been dealing with that for the last 10 minutes, but hopefully we're ready and good to go now. Uh, really quick, I forgot to mention this. At the end of this episode, I'm gonna be reading an excerpt from David Koenig's Shooting Columbo. It is an excellent book about the production of Columbo, behind the scenes about like the scripts for the episodes and the tumultuous production to get the show made. It is very well researched and I've really been enjoying reading that book alongside my watch of Columbo. So I try to find interesting little excerpts from that book to share with you guys. I try to keep them short because these reaction videos are already long enough as is, but I try to find the most interesting stuff and then just read from it. If you wanna stick around at the end of the reaction video for that, I will be doing that as well. Hopefully I will hit play on this episode and we will have no more problems. But with that being said, let us now try to get into this episode. Okay, sorry, I had to shift the camera again because there's no comfortable position on this couch. Anyway, look at my Columbo shirt. Okay, <laughs> I think I've had a million technical difficulties today. I had to switch the camera and I just don't think life likes me today, which is fine. I can work with this. Okay, season one, episode one, Murder by the Book. It premiered October 26th, 1971, and the episode summary is, Columbo investigates the case of a mystery writer who has committed the proverbial perfect crime. Ooh. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and dive right into this episode. After many technical difficulties, I am ready to watch a Columbo. God, I love that shot. This feels like a classic Spielbergism. You know, like, there's no dialogue, there's no sound, just the sound of the typewriter. I don't know what it is about those title cards that are so aesthetically pleasing, but they're just, I don't know, they just reek of classic 70s era, and I love it so much, but it has such a nice aesthetic to it. Ah, Jack Cassidy. You will go on to play four killers in the show, four or five. Doesn't he have, he had, I think he has the record with like um, Robert Culp 
right? For playing the most killers. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the typewriting got really old really quick. <laughs> Who is it? My mom had a typewriter like that. Oh, you're not intimidated, huh? Oh, come on, Ken. Are you forgetting that I'm one half of the world's greatest mystery writing? Ken. <laughs> you're right. I'm a lousy practical joker. What are you doing here with it? He has like a murderer's face. The cabin. I thought maybe I could use it for protection down there. I also came by to apologize. For what? For blowing my cork the other day. I got out of line. Blowing my cork. Forget it. You know, that happens. No, shouldn't happen. Not between you and me. Bottoms up, Jim. In the middle of the morning. Oh, come on, relax. It's Saturday. <laughs> oh, good. That makes it fine. <laughs> it always the middle of the night. I give you our divorce. Not really a divorce. Oh, sure it is. Come on, let's be honest. I mean, it, there's no alimony, but uh, it is a termination. And our dear little children, all 15 of them, 50 million copies. And to the lady who made it all possible, the greatest sleuth in the world, Mrs. Melville. Man, he's being so passive-aggressive right now. How many inside all, jokes friendship is more important than partnership. do you think right? the the writers had about Levinson and Link <laughs> for this episode being like, hey guys, right. it can be a murder mystery writing team, and then one of them can kill the other. Now, sir. <laughs> Actually, the timing isn't bad. I was just finishing the final chapter. Ah, uh, Mrs. Melville's last case. I left my lighter in the office. Do you need it? That's my security blanket. I'll be a minute. The soundtracks are so good. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking, I was like, if he's gonna stage something, shouldn't he be wearing gloves? And then I was thinking, well, if they're writing partners, he would be in that room relatively regularly. So I guess that doesn't really matter. Already some mighty fine camera work in here for 24 year old Steven Spielberg. I have a surprise for you. For moi? For moi. Prescription murder. A Mrs. Melville thriller by James Ferris. Look at that. <laughs> Plugging oh, their the the, the stage play that Dear started it all. Well, Mr. Franklin. They literally, ju they're like, why don't we make this episode a massive metaphor for Levinson and Lincoln, how Columbo got started. Like, they just couldn't help themselves. I love it, though. It's great. There's so much brown in this, in this one scene. Hello? Uh, Joanna, it's Ken. Oh, Ken. As a matter of fact, I left Jim at the office a few hours ago. We signed the armistice. Oh, well, why don't you? I really love to, but I'm, I'm spending the weekend down here in San Diego at the cabin. Right. I'll see you in a few days. Okay, so now he's wearing gloves. All right. There is so much brown. <laughs> the seventies are so, so brown. <laughs> Pick up the phone and call her. Simply say that you're working at the office. You're calling from the office. She knows you have a deadline to meet at the book. You're working late. And call us so we can start enjoying ourselves. <laughs> If you want your wife to believe you're calling from the office, you don't have the operator place the call. You dial it direct. The area code is 213. The way he's behaving is so suspicious. I don't know if anybody was talking to me like that. Also, the, the sleazy vibe. I don't know. It's just an episode. I'm just reading too much into it. I know. I, I know. This will be the last time that I can... Jimmy? Oh, okay. I was like, there's no way he's gonna leave the body at his cabin. The angles are so interesting. I think that's really what sets this episode apart, is they just feel very... Hello. The Do staging, I, I mean. Maybe the staging what? is the better word. Oh, what a shot. That is a really good shot. Well, the guys in the background look so old-timey. 
No, I didn't no, anything? no. Are you sure it was his voice? Yes, I know it was his voice. And maybe... I like no, how he overlaps, like, what's happening. Spielberg. I like how, yes, like, the editing is, like, you can hear what's off. going on in the he scene, and then you can see, like, all the cuts happening. Kind of like how they did in the beginning and kind of like how they're doing here. Like right here, like you can hear her talking and all the guys are taking pictures. Her outfit though. <laughs> I think that's out of order, man. Uh, you see, that's the trouble with these buildings. The fountains never work. Who are you? Uh, I'm just another cop. My name is Columbo. I'm a lieutenant. <laughs> I left before you got in there. You know why? Because it's so smoky in there and so noisy in there that I just had to come outside and get a breath. Oh, I think I'd better get back. Now, look, wait a minute. I love you him. very tired to me, and I think you had a terrible experience in there. And I think I ought to drive you home. Let's call it a night. I think you've answered enough questions, and I'll call him and I'll tell him you're with me. Why isn't Ken here? Is that Mr. Franklin, the other half of the writing team? You know, that's what I like about these buttons. You don't have to push them. They go off with the heat of your hand. I bet you haven't had anything to eat. I love him so much. And I love how in those You're quiet nice scenes... You're uh, really hungry. Sorry. I'll, tell you, I'll express Harris, later. I'm the worst cook in the world, but there's one thing I do terrific, and that's an omelet. Even my wife is... <laughs> I'm really not hungry. Listen, you'll take a taste. You don't like it? You throw it away. I'll tell you what the secret is to a good omelet. No eggs, just milk. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's so kind to her. I love him. You're a very persuasive man. I love him. Why'd you laugh before? What? When I asked you if Mr. Franklin was the other half of the writing team. Did I laugh? Yep. Maybe it was the way you put it. Writing team. But Ken hasn't written a word of a Mrs. Melville novel in years. Mrs. Melville? Who's Mrs. Melville? The character that Jim and Ken created. Well, uh, why did your husband? There's like so much subtweeting I mean, uh, of the creation of Columbo in here. I love it. Boy, I'll tell you, I'd love to be a writer. That's a terrific talent. Where do you get all the ideas? What's Asks anything? casually while cutting an onion. <laughs> Magazines. And those were mysteries too, weren't they? Huh? They're tricky, I'll tell you that. I could, I could never figure those things out. <laughs> it got harder. Maybe that's why he decided to go out on his own. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That sooner or later, people are bound to find out. What, that your husband did all the writing? Hmm? Uh, Lieutenant Colombo, Mr. Franklin. How you doing? Well, the question is, how you doing, Lieutenant? Well, how you doing? <laughs> Has Jim been found yet? Been found yet? Uh, why, did somebody tell you he was gone? Lieutenant, I just spent several hours driving up here from every See, news station. Already pin he's that. already pinpointed that Ken is found. the killer. Can you come up with any leads, any clues? It's a little early for that. Early. But now that he's you mention it, uh, you, based on the conversation I just had with Joanna. See, if Mrs. Melville were on this case, oh, she'd be leaps and bounds ahead of you by now. Sir, That's do right. you know who you're talking to? Dude, he even looks suspicious. Like, nothing about him looks innocent. <laughs> a list of names. Look at that. Musto, Delgado, Hathaway, Westlake. That's a list of some of the top men in organized crime on the West Coast. One of these men had Jim killed. Why? Yeah, really? How long have you been a lieutenant, lieutenant? Mrs. Melville would have put that together like that. You see, Jim was researching a complete and factual expose of all West Coast organized crime. I'm that's why Columbo already office. suspects him. I love it. Apparently they got everything, but that's He's like, list. I know you did you it, but let's just keep this um, facade going. I'm enjoying myself too much. Well, if he typed that on that typewriter, and I'll run a check on that, why would he fold it up before he put it in that drawer? Well, I'm beginning to like you. Why is that? Because you're finally beginning to think like Mrs. Melville. I'm going to give you something that you richly deserve. Chance to read some of our books. Maybe I can pick up a few pointers. Oh, that's very nice. That ought to keep you busy for a while, huh? Yeah, sure will. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night, sir. Actually, uh, there is one thing. <laughs> that you jumped in a car and drove right back to L.A., is that right? You know, me, I'd have taken a plane. He knows. A situation like that, who thinks clearly. 
And look at it this way. He's ugh, you know, he's too confident. He's too satisfied with himself. Hmm. Mm, Columbo knows. And he not only knows, he's like, I'm just gonna let you think I'm stupid. This episode is so fun in its direction. I mean, like, it feels just very intentional with the direction. Do you guys know what I mean? Like, the direction feels very purposeful. It just all feels like it has a lot of purpose, which I really appreciate. Columbo, this is Franklin. I think you better get over here right away. It's an emergency. He says in the calmest voice of all time. Like, I feel, he just incriminated himself by, like, throwing the body on the lawn. Like, could you look more guilty after that? You couldn't have dumped it someplace else, like, not on your property? It's like, in trying to make yourself look innocent, you make yourself, like, significantly more guilty. Boy, this is quite a place. Haven't they reused, like, this house, like, Oddly, it's an 20 times in the series? You own this? Mrs. Melville has been very kind. If a fella's partner dies... Uh, does he own the other fellas half of the books, half of the, uh... Royalties? Yeah. They go into the deceased's estate. Because, of course, you insured each other. Oh, I love him. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me you haven't figured that out? Oh, my God, he's getting really that annoying. You haven't figured it out like Mrs. Well, Melville, Lieutenant. Want. You're not as smart as Mrs. Melville, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, have you ever read Mrs. Melville? Like, is he trying to plug him on his books? Would he just let Columbo figure it out? So what are you Instead do? of, like... Guiding him? Well, you know what it means to have the body in my lawn. I must say, Lieutenant, you're up against a dead end. But you're never gonna find that killer. It's not gonna be easy. I guess the only thing I can do is just check out every name on that list. I must say, I don't envy you. I don't envy myself. <laughs> I forgot how fun some of this dialogue in this particular episode is. Wait a minute, you look like you're trouble. Is there some reason for your question? Uh... It's your mail. Isn't it funny how people are different? Now me, if I find my partner dead, I never think of opening my letters. Human nuances. He picks up on human nuances. If anything comes up, I'll call you right away. What kind of stand is that? <laughs> There's so many things about this episode I don't remember. Put that away. This one's on me. This is about an insurance policy. Oh, excellent. It's about time you came to me. Are there two mystery Oh, writers? that guy really and wanted to talk about his insurance. insurance. If you want confidential information, I'm afraid... Oh, well, you... look, uh, I don't want to cause you any trouble. Maybe it would be more helpful if I got a court order. You see what I mean? He doesn't even have to try. He's just such a badass. Oh my god, Columbo is so cool. Would it be more helpful if I got a court order? Yoo-hoo! Over here! Wow, shout louder, lady. What is up with that <laughs> the couple kissing in the background? <laughs> I have never noticed that. You like my dress? Why did they stand in the middle of the frame? <laughs> and they were just smooching. That was really funny. We really should have a discussion. It's a mystery story. It's all about this witness. Blackmail. The zoom ins, the angles, the artistic choices. <laughs> The piano music in the background is the theme for Ransom for a Dead Man. That's quite a stare. Yeah, it is. You're very lovely. <laughs> oh, I never noticed that. Adds an extra twinge of creepiness to the scene. They said he was killed in his office. In my story. You see, he was... Um, the music in the background is... Somewhere else. Messing with my head. When you were in my store making a phone call the other day, I wandered over to the side window to see if you had brought a lady with you. You can imagine my surprise when I saw your partner. Oh, you lady, not... you have made a critical mistake. Very well, lady. Oh, he's so creepy, dude. How much for your silence? $15,000. It's a pleasure doing business with you. My pleasure. Yeah, his vibes are... Ugh. <laughs> he's really good as the other killers, but this one, he's just pure, ugh, like sleaze, ugh. <laughs> oh my god, he's so cute. He's occupied at the moment. He has all 80,000 of the books. Only a few more. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Lieutenant, is there something I can do for you? <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you have a moment. 
I think our readers will want to know how the death of your partner will affect them, Mrs. Melville. I'm afraid when I buried Jim, I buried Mrs. Melville with him. Can't you write another one? Oh, I could, naturally, but what's the point? <laughs> Columbo in the Jim frame. Garner. The staging there is so perfect. No, I'm afraid, uh, you see her Mrs. arm, Melville him, her it goes case. right, left, uh, right. So I could give you a more detailed interview, even in more depth. That'll be nice. Shall I call you? Yes. That was Please. weird for everybody. Oh, and sorry, also the honey. photographer. Thanks very much. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant, what can I do for you? <laughs> well, I thought back to books, but the, the lady detective, what a character, what a brain, and what logic, the way she figures it out. What logic, the way she figures it out. Uh, you going someplace special? As a matter of fact, I'm on my way down to my cabin for a rest. Would you like an itinerary? Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you like an itinerary? I'm making a pass to myself. Oh. Yes, yes, I am. I know. <laughs> Would you like an itinerary? <laughs> he goes, oh, no. Yeah, do you have a minute? Jim and I had patched up our differences. What do you mean by differences? I knew Joanna would be concerned, and I wanted to put her mind at ease. Yeah, that's understandable. Oh, yeah. oh fine. Yeah. Is that all? <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> Good. So, oh, fine. Yeah, is that all? That's all. Now listen, uh, drive carefully. Don't worry, Lieutenant. You can count on it. Here's to prosperity. Adam, romance. The daily double. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cringing so much, but he's so good because you you just you. you hate him. He's so great, though. I don't know if I can trust you. Now, is there any reason not to? Yes. Lily, if I um, she I knows you. that you oh, killed please. Jim. <laughs> such a beautiful night we should row out to the center of the lake and go for a swim mm. <laughs> i'm so, sorry dude everything right about now. him is screaming murderer if if, if i mean? just got that money from him and then he took me out on a date like, and he was like just we should go into the middle of a lake for a swim i would have been like nope bye i almost wish he were here now well maybe we can do the next best thing <laughs> And to think he was really going to try to lure her out to the middle of the lake when she was still alive. <laughs> That's a beautiful shot. What the heck? Please, Columbo. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, please let Columbo just be waiting for him. <laughs> Morning. Hound him. Hound him. Oh, there was a drowning. Well, what was it? A fisherman? Local woman. Uh, a Miss Lasanka or something? Like, something like that. I think she was the one that drowned. Well, if it was her, I, I'd be very sorry. She was always very friendly. Oh, you did know her. <laughs> Jack asks, really he's like, I'm going to kill you. I didn't mean to bother you. No, no, no. It's no bother at all. Ugh, that shot. Yeah, There's so many shots I'd like to just screen cap in, keep for shit. desktop backgrounds. You know, I didn't want to barge in on you today unannounced. No, last night I called to tell you that I was coming, but there was no one at home. <laughs> He just nails him with the facade on. Love him. Do you mind if I browse around? Well, help yourself, Lieutenant. Didn't she have a bruise on her head? How did you know that, Ben? Probably a result of the boat capsizing and rendering her unconscious. I can't ascertain that until we see an autopsy report. The doctor's <laughs> right now. Sounds like drinking to me. I wasn't married to the lady. Living Classic. I don't know boat. What about it? Belong to the deceased. I've got witnesses that have entertained out of the lake. I love how he did that shot how they just carried you through the scene up until him sneaking through the doorway ah camera direction is so fun it just goes to show you how much the camera direction can like tell the story you know what an important part it plays i don't remember this <laughs> she got dizzy and you think it was an accident i certainly don't think it was foul play Oh, I don't know. We'll wait till we get the report. We're starting to cover the same old ground murder. here, gentlemen. Now, why don't you meet me in my office an hour? Wow, hour. I, I don't remember this. I'll answer them all day and now that I know the background, Columbo reading Prescription Murder has that much more meaning. To my Lily, love always can. Whoops. It means that he knew her. It means that he knew her, not casually the way he said it. It means that he knew her reasonably well. I've known Ken too long. He's not a murderer. Mrs. Ferris, this man, Franklin, took your husband's life. I checked the bank. Yesterday, he took out $15,000. Today, put it back in again. 
Dang, there's some excellent detectiving happening here. I'm still not convinced. I want you to tell me about him. Anything. Just talk. Whatever comes into your mind. Kind of like analysis without the couch. <laughs> they have a really good dynamic, too. Well, I told you a lot about Jim. He'd wake up in the middle of the night with ideas, always throwing off sparks. He even did it on our honeymoon. Oh my god, these camera zoom-ins are so good. The camera direction makes such a huge difference and you almost don't notice it until you see shots like this. That was, th oh my god, that was so good. Do you see what I'm saying? The staging is so smart. The staging is so delicious in this episode. I feel like that's meme material right there. <laughs> Columbo reading the book. I happen to be in the neighborhood. Oh, you're always in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm here to arrest you for the murder of your partner. It's... Oh, you cut that drivel. I've written that stuff so many times, I know it by heart. And what is this nonsense? You're going to arrest me. I kind of knew it right from the start. Yeah, you did. There's nothing definite. There's a lot of little things. The open mail. Never showing any genuine emotion for a man that you worked with for Exactly! <laughs> with that, can you prove that? Yes. Say, I enjoy watching a man raise without any cards in his hand. You know what, Ken? I'm gonna tell you the truth. He called him Ken. Well, suddenly I thought of something. How clever that first murder was. Brilliant. Oh, you awarding gold medals today? Yes. He's so first, sarcastic! Second one. Come on, get to the climax, Lieutenant. You're talking to a writer. This dialogue is so flippin' good. Mrs. Ferris told me that you didn't contribute to the writing. How could a man with no talent for mysteries make up such a clever murder? If he were that genius, Burn. you'd be able to write your own books. The first one, the clever one, that wasn't yours. The second one, the sloppy one, that was yours. A wants to kill B. Drives B to a remote house and has him call his wife Bang Bang. That's the part you used. Wow. <laughs> you want to know the irony of all of it? That is my idea. I must have told it to Jim over five years ago. Whoever thought that idiot would write it down. Utterly perfect dialogue and performances from both of them. Beautiful performances from both of them. I feel like this should be mandatory viewing in a film class. Like this episode specifically of Mrs. Melville saw the whole thing. She was watching the entire time. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna try to give my really quick thoughts because I do want to read an excerpt from Shooting Columbo. Love how they end on the portrait of Mrs. Melville. Melville, so poetic, so perfect. She was the one to, there. the picture was the one to witness like what was actually happening with the crime and then to have it end on her eyes being zoomed in on. It's just very poignant. So I really appreciate how they ended that. Let me just look over my notes, what I wrote down. So one thing I've pointed out already, I think in my first few reaction videos about the character of Columbo in general is that he's very in tune with like human nuances, like things that people tend to do and then when they fall out of those nuances so like the male thing with jack cassidy's character ken you know columbo picks up on he's like why if a body was just thrown in your yard would you just go in and check your mail like that's so weird or the scene where like in the beginning like mrs ferris is really really upset and so she goes out to get a drink of water and columbo notices like how overwhelmed she is and he starts talking to her and then they go back to her house and then like as he's like trying to make an omelet to like make her feel better, he just throws in his questions there. And so it just kind of shows you like how in tune Columbo is with other people and their nuances and what they tend to do and how like people feel. And I really think that's like such an attractive part of the character is his empathy for people, but also just like how aware he is of their behaviors, like the psychology of people which I thought was just really cool to see in this particular episode. I thought it was kind of funny how this whole episode's kind of making a nod to Levinson and Link as writing partners, and you can definitely tell that there was an inside joke going on where, did Richard Levinson kill William Link or was it vice versa? And you can, you can almost like kind of see what that writer's room looked like when they were conceptualizing this episode. So that is kind of funny that they threw that in there. 
the prescription murder thing, like that being one of the author's books, I thought that that was a funny little nod. I really enjoyed that aspect about the episode. Something else I really liked is Jack Cassidy just... I think this is probably his best role as a killer on Columbo. I think he went on to appear at least three or four more times throughout the show, if I'm remembering that correctly. But I think that this one is easily his best performance because he's so sinister and sleazy to the point where you're like, ugh, God, like, just catch him. Like, he's getting really, really obnoxious. But there's also this charm about him that really, really makes you like him as the killer. I I got a huge kick of how he was, like, hamming up the sarcasm in scenes with Columbo. Where he would, what was that scene? Like, a couple scenes before the ending. Oh, it was when Columbo was like, I'm making a pest of myself. (laughs) And then Jack asked me, he goes, no. It's so sarcastic. Fantastic, but so perfect. I'm making a pest of myself. Oh. Yes, yes, I am. Oh, no. yeah. I really liked how he delivered some of his responses where Columbo was like, well, you know, I, I noticed that you are going back up to your to your vacation house. <laughs> Jack asked he goes, would you like an itinerary? <laughs> It was just the, his responses were really fun. He was extremely sarcastic. Very, very likable killer. I think that this is probably his best performance throughout Columbo. Obviously, this goes without saying, but 24-year-old Steven Spielberg crushed it in this episode. I just wrote down direction, absolutely astounding. I loved how it would, like, I loved how long some of the camera shots were. And I'll keep going back to, back to this particular shot, but the shot in the beginning where Ken tells Jim, oh, I left my lighter in the office and I need to go get it. And he goes up and he messes up the entire office. And like, as he finishes doing it, the camera hangs on him and watches him exit the frame. And then it goes down to the lighter and it makes us, the audience think, oh, Ken forgot his lighter. But then Ken's hand comes back into the frame and like picks it up. Um, It's little things like that that's so fun to me. The shot where Columbo comes into Lily's little store and he walks through and you can see all the reporters like hounding this sheriff and the sheriff's trying to answer all the questions and we think it's going to hang on them. But the camera holds on to Columbo as he walks past. He sticks his hand into the candy jar. He eats a piece of candy and then he goes into the next room and then we begin the next uh, series of shots. Or, you know, like you have the, the camera shot of Ken walking up to the truck to talk to the guy in the truck and you can see Ken in the frame and you can see the man that he's talking to in the rearview mirror. It's just like, it's so fun, but it also just really enhances the story, those kinds of creative camera shots. And anyway, I just happen to think that that kind of creative camera direction enhances the story that much more. It's just really, really fun to watch. And I got a kick out of some of those camera shots. Last thing, that dialogue at the end was played to perfection. That The way that Peter Falk and... Jack Cassidy played off of each other. It's just, it's so perfectly matched. It's like Columbo's very calm and he's like, yep, here's the proof. Um, You did this, you did this, you did this. And by the way, this is what's going to hold up in court. And just watching Jack Cassidy's character, that that sinister, snobby, self-confident vibe just get knocked down at the end is so satisfied and it is played to perfection. All in all, great episode. I loved it. Very hard to summarize my thoughts after almost two hours of sitting in front of a screen, but I really enjoyed that one. Steven Spielberg crushed. I think that this is like a great way to start the show for a new viewer. This was actually the first episode of the show that I ever watched. I didn't watch Ransom for a Dead Man or the other pilot episode, uh, Prescription Murder, until much, much later. And so I think that it, this episode, I was like, holy crap, by the end. Um, so I think that this is a great introductory episode to the series, and I'm glad that they pus- put this one first as the opener to the show. And now, without further ado... Almost two hours of recording. We are going to read a tiny little excerpt from Shooting Columbo. As you can see, I've marked up this book considerably. We're not, we're gonna keep this relatively short today, but let's find a little excerpt about Murder by the Book. (laughs) 
Okay, so just as I suspected, for Murder by the Book, Bochco named his writing team Ferris and Franklin. Soon everyone around the studio began chattering about which real life partner was the talented one and which one was the coattail writer. The joke became, did Link kill Levinson or did Levinson kill Link? <laughs> That's really funny. Other subtle touches give nods to Levinson and Link. Franklin presents as a gift of one of his Mrs. Melville novels called Prescription Murder. Levinson and Link wanted a professional quality for the series, as if each entry was a motion picture unto itself. So they sought the best, most accomplished directors available. Scheinberg suggested Steven Spielberg, the tw talented 24-year-old he and Wesserman were grooming. So eventually Steven Spielberg was suggested to them. Spielberg had completed a night of, or excuse me, name of the game for Dean Hargrove and two shows of Night Gallery and The Psychiatrist. Levinson and Link viewed a rough cut of the psychiatrist and were sold. They just had to convince Falk, who had the right to re refuse their choice of director. They showed Falk the psychiatrist, and he too was impressed. Falk was even more dazzled once production began. Spielberg planned meticulously and employed techniques the other, other veterans on the set had never heard of before. His very first shot began with an overhead on Franklin's car driving toward his partner's office, then pulled back to reveal the camera was actually filming from inside Ferris's upper floor glass office where Ferris types madly away. Falk remembered, for the first time in any television show that I had ever done, we did a scene and I had no idea where the camera was. I'm not sure, but I think it was across the street in a second story window. Yeah, that's so cool, dude. The fact that he was like 24 directing television like this is pretty badass. That's pretty cool. Levinson and Link were so delighted with the completed episode that they recommended Murder by the Book be bumped ahead of Death Lends a Hand and scheduled as the series opener. And honestly, I think that's a great call. I mean, I think the episode is incredibly well directed, well shot. The performances are amazing. It's a really good first episode to show somebody who is completely new to the show. Anyway, those are your little facts from David Koenig's Shooting Columbo. Uh, highly recommend purchasing this book if you're super into Columbo and you want to learn more about the production behind it. But those are your little tidbits for today. Thank you for watching this video. I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties today, guys. Um, today is not my day. I am just having an off day. It has been so weird all around. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for checking out this video. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to continue to watch Columbo with me. And let me know what your favorite aspects about this episode are. There's so much to appreciate here and enjoy. And I have not seen that episode in a while. So that was really fun to go back and catch new things I wasn't aware of the first time. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, hopefully a better day than me, and I will see you in the next reaction video. See you later.